Welcome into the News for Jags podcast. It's only one sleep left before game <laughs> one day. One sleep, unbelievable. <laughs> Nasty weather already moving in. It's going to feel like serious game day. It's going to be cold. On Saturday night. It's going to be so cold. This might be the coldest home game in Jaguars history. Yeah, under 40 <laughs> degrees tomorrow oh as the, the game wraps up. So bundle up, Jaguars fans. It's going to be a, a great game, but it's also going to be a football-like environment on Saturday night. I'm not going to throw this this Jaguars player under the bus, but he told me he picked his college because he liked to play in the cold weather and that he hated hot, sloppy football games. I was like, and you signed with the team in Florida in free agency? Why did you think that was a good idea? But uh, he's going to get his yeah, wish, and he has right. some cold, uh, I guess you could almost say it's football weather. It's going to be chilly, uh, especially Florida chilly. So everybody's going to bundle up, best Jaguars jackets out on the field. Yeah. Uh, should be an interesting game. Yeah, a lot of people who have Jaguars jackets who can never wear them. There you go. When it's scalding hot and the sun is beating down in September and even in October, you're going to get a chance to wear that Jaguar starter attire, those Fanatics jackets. It's going to be nice football weather on Saturday, and I'm excited. I keep telling everybody I haven't bought a jacket since I moved to Florida, and they think I'm crazy, and I'm like, <laughs> when, when am I going to wear it? Why? For like, what, two days a year? Why right. am I buying a jacket? So uh, if you got the jacket in the closet, break it out. This is your chance, especially to go to the game as you cheer on the crowd. You're probably going to end up getting so warm because you're into the game that you'll end up taking it off, but that's a good problem to have. That is. All right, uh, so the big news today is that the Chargers ruled wide receiver Mike Williams out. Mike Williams is a Big-time receiver, big-play threat kind of guy. He played in the first go-around against the Jaguars back in Week 3 while Keenan Allen was out. They basically flipped the script this right. go-around. Uh, Keenan Allen going to play while Mike Williams is going to be out with a back injury. And that's – I'd be more comfortable if it was Austin Eckler who was out yeah. of the game than Mike Williams. You know, Mike didn't do much that first week meeting in Week 3, 38-10. Jaguars all in that game. Nobody in the Chargers really did well that game. But uh, removing him from that lineup makes one less guy that Jaguars really have to focus on. I, I like the matchups now with Darius Williams and Tyson Campbell against those two guys that the Chargers are lining up. So, But Austin Eckler scares me. I think we're going to get a healthy Justin Herbert, so it's mm-hmm. going to be different than the first time around. But, again, I like some of these matchups. I, it's, I, I feel much better now that the Mike Williams news came out. I know Chargers fans don't because Brandon Staley played him late in a game that was really of right. very little meaning in the regular season finale. So I know Chargers fans, a little bit of angst that Mike Williams, their biggest big play threat, is not going to be playing against his Jaguars in a playoff game. I know. Playoff it's a, game. It's a playoff game, and it's a big one. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some of Tyson Campbell following Keenan Allen yep. just to make sure they try and neutralize that guy. Um, so it, it'll definitely be interesting to, to see how this game flows. That's what we're going to talk about today is our, our kind of expectations as far as game flow and our predictions for who might walk away with a win on Saturday. Uh, so this one should be an interesting one. Uh, I'll let you go first. I do think there's going to be a lot of points. I think both of us can probably agree on that part. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit – uh, Jacksonville's offense to me has just scared me this this last yeah. month. They've not – you know, I know you had 31 against the Texans, and the, the game against the Jets was just kind of a throwaway game. Nasty weather, 19-3, not a great offensive game. The offense last week against the Titans didn't do much either. Right. Uh, it was Riley Patterson and, and one Trevor Lawrence touchdown pass, and the defense – led the way so I'm a little hesitant to say Jacksonville's going to light up the scoreboard we keep waiting to see that offense get back in sync like it hit during that uh, that winning streak that kind of launched them over uh, against that uh, you know the Chargers game early in the season we're going to see that kind of offense right we see Travis Etienne run when it was James Robinson running before what are we going to see are we going to see that offense lighten it up like they did in the Ravens game like the Cowboys game or are we going to see them struggling through like they did against the Titans they did not run the ball well last week Trevor Lawrence struggled, and Trevor really hasn't hasn't had a great last month of the season. Not. So I'm a little bit worried about this offense. I, I kind of on. I know last week you were, you were thinking it was going to be a lot of points scored by the Jaguars, and it turned out to be a defensive battle. Titans had a great was. great right. game plan last week. So I don't know. I'm I'm a little hesitant about this being an offensive shootout. It's going to be colder. Jaguars just haven't been in that offensive sink in, in quite some time, it feels like. So I'm, I'm going to shy away and say I don't think we're going to see that gunslinging effort. I know everybody's Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, gunslingers, stars of the future, big offensive guys. 
But I just, I, I'm, I'm feeling like a low-scoring game tomorrow, a lower-scoring game. Lower-scoring game from both teams? Or both, just, both teams. Oh, I, th- I think okay. it's going to be, an, be an I think it's okay. going to be a little bit low-scoring um, affair, like we saw last week against uh, the Titans and, and Jags, 20 to 16. I think it'll be a little higher, more higher scoring than that, but I don't think it's going to be much. So the one thing, like I, I was concerned with the offense uh, after the past few weeks too, and think the 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 solution that I've kind of landed on is that I think they were playing down to the competition just a little bit. Uh, you can even the Jets game; it was windy. Mm-hmm. They knew the Jets weren't going to score many, very many points. So, you know, you had the whole quarterback situation there. The Jets, good defense, bad offense. Play the Texans, mm-hmm. good defense, bad offense. You knew Davis Mills wasn't going to put up a ton of points. And then you play against the Titans with Josh Dobbs starting. All you had to worry about was Derrick Henry. Good defense, bad offense. So you played against three teams with good defense, bad offense. And to some extent, I kind of feel like this young team, we talk about how young they are even though they've matured a little bit and been able to play comeback. Mm -hmm. I think that those comeback victories are a product of being young and not knowing how to bury teams. I mean, we talked about it earlier in the season. I mean, that that Philadelphia Eagles team was a, a direct uh, conversation about not knowing how to close the door and bury a team, mm-hmm. and that's what I feel like this offense did over the last stretch was, eh, we, if we score 30 points, we'll win this game easily. Like, they, they didn't end up scoring mm-hmm. 30 against the Texans, but they got a defensive touchdown, right. and it wasn't exactly clean to get there, and they were able to pull the starters, but it still wasn't a game where you walked away and said it was dominant. Uh, the Jets, they got the win, mm-hmm. did just enough, protected the football, but you didn't walk away and say offense was dominant. Again, weather was a factor in that one. But against the Titans, they knew they didn't have to score very many points. They had to protect the football, and it just feels like at times they're in those three games that they weren't going out there to bury teams. Let, mm-hmm. let's, let's hang 30 on them. We know they can't score 30. Let's hang 30 on them, call it a day. And it doesn't feel like they're at that point with that kind of kill switch yeah. just yet. Um, so I do think that they can kind of flip the switch of sorts to get back on the page of, of the production on offense. And this week, going against the Chargers, that's why I feel pretty confident that the Jaguars are going to score points. I also feel pretty confident that the Jaguars' defense isn't going to be able to completely <laughs> stop the Chargers' offense for a second time this year. Just don't, I don't see that happening. So it wouldn't surprise me if this one is lighting up the scoreboard. I mean, if we have 60 maybe even 70 total points wow. in between both teams. I mean, it's if, generous here. Look, I, I think this is going to be a game where both teams score more than 30 points. I think I think the winning, it's going to be something like 35-31 kind of game. Okay, all right. Um, you know, see so it a little different. I, I, we, we see it a little different. Right. We do. I definitely yeah. don't think the Jaguars' defense is going to hold the, hold the Chargers less than 20. I just don't I see think, that. I think, it, to me, I think it'll be a game like, last week score-wise. I don't think we're going to see that plotting in, in four field goals. I, I think it's going to be a battle. Um, I, Bosa back in this game. Mm-hmm. Jaguars defense is playing well. I don't think it's going to be a, a game like – I don't think it'll be a 38-35 game. I see it more as like a, a 24-17 kind of game. Um, I think these offenses – and I think they're good offenses. I think Jacksonville's stuck in that rut a little bit. A little bit. Um, and, and struggling. I'm, You know, last week I wanted to see a little bit more from Trevor and – had he got the ball back in that last drive of the game, I wasn't confident he could do it. Uh, Offense struggled last week. And I wonder how much of that was nerves. I mean, Trevor's played in big games in college, but it's probably the biggest game of his NFL career, yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, I mean, he even called it just the first, uh, it was playoff the first playoff game. game. Mm-hmm. It was a playoff game. So you, you, the hope is that maybe Justin Herbert has those nerves this week <laughs> right. because this will be his first playoff game, and Trevor Lawrence is settled because he's now – had a playoff right. game behind him. That that's the hope is that maybe you get that that flip. Right, and then Doug, you know, Doug Peterson's four and two in the playoffs. He's won a Super Bowl. Brandon Staley, just like Justin Herbert and Trevor Lawrence, making his first NFL coaching experience as a head coach right. in the playoffs. So this is only a second season. How much does that coaching pedigree? You know, Doug's talked about it this week. He wants guys to to come in and speak to the team. He leaning on the guys with that playoff experience. And again, mm-hmm. not a lot of guys on the Jaguars. With playoff experience, 13 guys on this team have played in a playoff game, and some of those guys just a few snaps here and there. So it's not a lot of guys. You know, 53-man roster, you got 13 guys on there, 40 have no experience in the playoffs. Um, I mean, Darius Williams, the the, the gray beard of the group, and he's not exactly an NFL veteran. He's got six games of playoff experience. So playoff 
games hit differently. Talk to any guy who's played in the playoffs. Darius spoke about it this week, Mm -hmm. how different it is in the playoffs. And interesting thing that that Darius Williams said, a Creekside grad, by the way, for our local fans, Darius said it's we we try to focus on the game at hand. We try to focus on the right now, the team in front of us, but we want to look ahead a little bit towards Mm -hmm. next week, too. That that inspires us. That motivates us. So, yes, it's, it's focus on the week, focus on the right now. But it's also a little eye towards next week. What's still on the line? You know what the playoffs entail. I thought that was interesting, Gary Williams. You know, you look ahead towards next week because what could possibly well, be there for you? you? They have to keep in mind, and it's good to hear a guy talking about that because we asked Doug Peterson about that too this week, is the Jaguars have come so far. I mean, they no one expected them outside to be to win the mm-hmm. AFC South. Not many people expected them to to win the AFC South. Not many people expected them to make the playoffs. Especially not in October, midway right. through the season. People I mean you're two and seven, there's not a whole lot of confidence you're gonna turn it around. They're like, uh, oh, Jaguars. Uh so when you've already defied expectations, especially when you've picked number one overall twice in a row for the guys mm-hmm. that have been here for a while it's understandable why some of them could see, like, making it to the playoffs as the finish line. Yeah, right. We got here. All right, guys. You know, woo, throw yeah, a party. We with, did it. We're playing with house money playing right with house money. No one but, expected it. But there, that's what Doug Peterson and even Darius Williams' comments, it doesn't seem like they're looking at it like that. And they're almost saying, like, we didn't come this far to come this far. We're not. Job's not done. Job's just starting. Mm-hmm. So that's good to see that they're eyeing that ahead and they haven't said, ah, we made it to the finish line. We're good. You know, because even Doug Peterson – he said, "Patience. You know, it wouldn't wouldn't be an overnight fix. Well, overnight they're in the playoffs, right? And so, that's so it's, to me, I go back to to Doug that introductory press conference when he talking about, yeah, this is this is a long term project, right? You know, you pick number one in the draft two years in a row for a reason, a reason, a reason. And this is not going to be something where you go worst to first. I mean, he was very, very quick to point that out and stress that multiple times in mm-hmm. his press conference and said, this is not going to be something that happens overnight. Well." We got a little bit of taste of that at two and one, lost that at two and six, mm-hmm. and then you started feeling that. You know, Doug said his miraculous statement that it's going to come down. If I have a crystal ball, I can look at that. What game was that after? Uh, that was after the Chiefs, Chiefs game. game. So you're talking right before the the, the bye week, you go into to KC and, and take a bad beating, and Doug Peterson, clairvoyant as it may sound, yeah. pulled out the crystal ball and said, so, "This is going to come down to week 18." Yeah. So uh, Doug, obviously, I think he was trying to temper those ex- expectations in his press conference, but he saw something in this team, and I think you alluded to it earlier, oh. about giving veterans and guys the time off during training camp. Yeah. And you wouldn't do that if you didn't feel good where your team is. It's funny, this week Doug said, nah, I'm thinking about those three practices yeah. I gave those guys up. I, I sure could use those right now, but Doug Peterson believed in this team, though he didn't um, convey that initially. He mm-hmm. saw the, the Urban Meyer fiasco and restoring the culture in the team, and Doug Peterson somehow believed in this team when no one here in this room did and certainly not a lot of Jaguars fans did. So for your head coach to believe in you, the players love Doug Peterson. They do. But he lied. It's an overnight it's an overnight (laughs) fix. I did not see this coming this year. No, I mean he's done a phenomenal job to get them here and I'd be willing to bet if you sat down Doug and asked him realistically, he's looking at this, you know, nine wins and right now, maybe going into the year he would have taken nine. Like if, if you asked him before the season started, like is not if you, if I give you nine wins in the AFC South Championship, he's probably taking that deal like yes. But if you ask him right now, I'd be willing to bet he tells you we should have twelve. Yeah. I mean, or they should have twelve. It's absolutely um, true because they they, the they let a number of them slip away. Right. They, they realistically could have beat the Eagles. They realistically could have beat the Giants. Mm-hmm. They realistically should have beat the Tex- the Texans at home. I mean, that's three right there. Yeah, the Broncos game. So I mean, the list goes on. Right. So that that's what pushes you from being the four seed mm-hmm. in the playoffs into the conversation for one of those top three. Right. Which could be the difference in the next round when they have to go on the road, depending on where they have to go if they win. Um, so it, it, it'll be an interesting way to look at how this thing continues in the future, but it, it's been a, definitely a spectacular first year for Doug Peterson. Uh, but but they're not satisfied, so they're going to go out there and try and win this game. Guys are focused. Guys are very loose. They don't seem tensed up this week. Um, we have different views on, on how the game flow is going to go, but uh, let's see if we can agree on the outcome. Who do you think is going to win? 
You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, my, my picks have been terrible this year. I'm, I'm last in our office standings. I'm Mm -hmm. five and 12. So the Jaguars lugged me into the postseason, uh, courtesy of their, uh, their AFC South championship. I would have not made it. I would have been picking up close to where the bears and the Texans were picking in the draft had I, you know, had this, had this season. I am going to say, I'm going to deviate a little bit, and I picked the Jaguars a lot, and I said even earlier in the week that I liked the Jaguars on Saturday night, but the more I think about it, I, I'm going to pick the Chargers this week. I'm, I know, I know. I'm going to say Chargers 24-17. 24-17. All right. I, like I said, I think we see the game a little bit differently. I think this is going to be a higher scoring game. I think the, the fans that went to the bank last Saturday night and kind of had to weather through that low-scoring slugfest <laughs> are going to be in for a treat this go-around. I okay. think there's going to be a lot of points. The scoreboard's going to get a lot of work, a lot of kickoff return opportunities. I'm even going to say Jamal Agnew takes one to the crib. Okay, I, I nice. think Jamal Agnew gets a kick return for a touchdown. I'm saying it now. Um, and I think the Jaguars win this game uh, 35-31. I okay. think it's going to be a rather high-scoring shootout. It's going to be one that uh, the, even the casual fan outside of L.A. and Jacksonville are going to be, they'll hear okay. about it at halftime and tune in. This is going to be a, the first meeting of many for Justin Herbert and Trevor Lawrence, and I think 16 gets the better. Herbert okay, where, where do you see the playoff road leading after this? Where will they go? They're going to Kansas City. Going to Kansas City going next Kansas week. City. Okay. Going to Kansas City so we can get some barbecue. So, okay. Right. They've been up there once already this year. So, Jamal's picking a win. I'm picking a, a tough loss. But, again, yeah. I don't think you, no matter win or lose, I don't think you're a Jaguars player and you come away with on Saturday night, Sunday morning, and say this season was a disappointment if we lose. I think this season has been a wild success. Um, and I, I, it will be that immediate if sure. they lose. I think it will be that oh, we could have done better. But when you look at Jacksonville as a whole – Oh, for October. I don't think that's that happens too often. And you come out, you pick number one in the draft twice. You're only the third team in NFL history to pick first in the draft only, and then only, win your division. And the, only the fifth team with year. a five-game losing streak and five-game winning right. streak. Right. So, I mean, you're talking a historic type of season for the Jaguars, a team that no one picked yeah. them to do anything this year. I, I've said all along next year, you were one of the few who said the AFC South was so bad this year that they could contend. And mm-hmm. it happened that way so I don't think you can look at this season win or lose I think obviously if you you win this game you're still going next week it's got that 96 kind of feel to it where you're nine and seven and sneak into the playoffs and continue to go on and on but if you lose on Saturday night I still think this season is a wild wild success you look at all the the talent in the AFC quarterback wise you've got to feel Jacksonville I think we talked about Trevor getting in that upper crust of, of top 12, 13 quarterbacks. He starts next year in that upper crust of quarterbacks. This team is on the ascent going up next year. Mm-hmm. And I don't think, you know, if you lose, if we're done talking about Jaguars after Saturday night, the season has been a wild, smashing success for Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence. It definitely has been a success. But when they win, I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you, look, I, and I'm going to go on a limb on this one, too. Their best chance in the second round is against the Kansas City Chiefs rather than the Bills. If they got to go to Buffalo, I think they lose. I think they have a legitimate shot to beat the Chiefs. Uh, um, they played tough against the Chiefs the first go around, uh, and I think that you give Doug Peterson a second shot to go in there to Kansas City. And I think that first go round, the Chiefs are going to say, "Eh, we got them. We handled them pretty well." Okay, so, since Jamal, since so Jamal's- when they win and go to Kansas City, <laughs> next thing you know, they're in the AFC okay. Championship. Since game. Jamal's handing out predictions like candy in this this uh, podcast, <laughs> big defensive guy this game. If you're if you're tabbing a guy who's going to have a blockbuster play, a, a Rayshon Jenkins type of moment in this game, and we Ooh. saw it last week with Rayshon. We saw it last week with Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. Who is your defensive guy? You already, you've already got Jamal Agnew housing one. I got Jamal okay, Agnew. So who's your defensive the house. guy this week? Um, I'm going to go Andre Sisco with a pick. Okay. At, le- at least one pick uh, for Andre Sisco. Give me Andre Sisco with a pick, and Arden Key leads the team in okay. sacks and pressures. Okay. I was going to say Arden Key slash Caleb on as a as a defensive kind of okay. you know a sleeper there. Caleb on's been playing. He's getting some snaps. He's getting, he's getting some in snaps. There. He is. And then I'm going to say Tyson Campbell would be my other defensive. You know the, the Arden Key, Caleb on is my 
kind of under the radar pick, and I think Tyson is my defensive guy. There you go. Tyson's going to be a pro bowler next year. He, he, he is. is he's, he's on I, that pace. I, I did not understand the pick. I'm a Georgia fan, and, and I did not understand the Tyson Campbell pick when it was made. And now you're glad they there did. There was some, some <laughs> talent left on that board receiver-wise last year in that draft. It went with Tyson Campbell. I didn't quite see it last year when they did. I don't think any of us saw it. Tyson couldn't couldn't turn around when for the first four games. He kept right. running with his you know with his his head just not on the swivel. So Tyson Campbell, he's my defensive guy on Saturday night. All right, you got an offensive guy. You want you want to go? Well, you don't think they're yeah. going to score any points? Yeah, I mean, so. I'll say. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not going to be as bold as Jamal and say Snoop Connor is going to you know, do it on, so on, uh, on. I'm going to say Zay Jones if I have an offensive guy. Zay I'm going to say Zay, Zay's kind of my my guy. You know, he's not the, not the Evan Ingram guy. He's not the, not the Travis Etienne. I'm going to say Zay is, is the guy who emerges on Saturday for me. I, I'm going to go with this an Evan Ingram night. I think, uh, I think Evan Ingram, uh, I like the matchup with the Chargers linebackers. Uh, Travis Etienne could have a big night. I'm just not sure especially after the game he had last week mm-hmm. and Jamichael Hasty getting more and more work. So I'm, go- I'm going Evan Ingram on offense. Okay. I got Andre Sisco on defense, Arden Key with some sacks or, okay. or quarterback pressures there, and Jamal Agnew housing a kick. Okay, and, and I've, I've got Caleb on chase on Arden Key and Tyson Campbell, and I've got Zay Jones as my kind of breakout or silent guys that are, that are stepping up and doing yeah. something in the game. So I think I think it's going to be a good one. It's going to be cold. It's going to be exciting. And we do have some more coverage coming tomorrow. Yeah, uh, we got a lot of coverage. Oh, man. It starts at 5 o'clock. We're going to be live over at the slab at the Bold City Brigade tailgate. We'll be there live from 5 to 6 on Channel 4. If you're not at the tailgate, make sure you tune in on Channel 4. If you are at the tailgate, come by. See, we got towels that we're handing out because we're for the Jags. So we'll have, a, we'll have some towels for everybody that we can hand out. We'll be talking to fans. It's going to be fun. We'll get everybody ready for the game. After we go off the air at channel or on Channel 4, we'll come back on at 6.30 online on NewsForJags.com and NewsForJags Plus app. And you can watch that with us. It will go from 6.30 all the way to 7.30, then kickoffs at 8.15. We'll drop another one of these podcasts at some point with our reactions from yep. the game as we start to get ready for the next round of the playoffs. Right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be a busy uh, Saturday for us and a busy Saturday for you and an exciting Saturday for everybody. Uh, so uh, make sure you, you spend some time with Channel 4 and, and get ready for the game with us. It should be a, a whole lot of fun. We're excited. All right, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you after the big game. All right, see you.